Well, I mean, whatever you say, designing a train from zero, from the first drawing to the final product is really a gigantic challenge. And I think, I think it's a dream project for designers. One of the things, let's say even more dream project than the other trains which I did was designing the Nozomi 500. Nozomi Shinkansen 500 for the Japanese railways. The whole thing started actually as a study, as a visit by a Japanese designer who once came to the office and said, well, we would like to work for a, with a German company, design company, and showing him the work which I had done for the ICE test train and for the Trans Rabbit, he said, okay, that's interesting, I come back. He came back two times with other people and suddenly I had an invitation to come to Japan and there they told me they would like me to design a train, a Shinkansen high-speed train, more or less the cream of the cream train for Japan. For a German designer to design a Japanese high-speed train is really a dream come true. And we started with a study. The study was a, called HST 350, a train for the next generation with a limit of 350 kilometers per hour. And what made the project actually fascinating was not only that I could do something from the beginning, from zero, because they gave me just the basic dimensions, the basic number of passengers, and so on, but that I suddenly found I was in contact with a partner from the engineering side with which I had immediate contact. His English was really not super, exactly like my Japanese, but we managed to communicate uh, in drawings. And that made the project really fascinating. What made it fascinating as well that my colleague always chose the more interesting, the more complicated, but from the design point of view, the better solution. It was something he always said, okay, I know this alternative, I know why you did it, but this is better. It was always the more complicated version. So this started actually a sort of, uh, well, working relationship, which was very special. Imagining it coming from two cultures, without really language communication, making a design. And the rest of the team, the Japanese designers, which helped me then and our team here in Munich to make the details, to make the Japanese specifications. Well, all this ended in a study, which then was shown to the Japanese uh, railway authorities and uh, different ones, actually. And they uh, then, JR West, one of the railway authorities, decided to make a product out of this, a project out of this. And uh, so then came step two. The presentation in Japan, which I had actually uh, participated in, uh, had always been supplemented by the engineering side showing their new ideas on aerodynamics and we showing our new ideas on interiors and exteriors. And now suddenly we were in a boat together and trying to make the train, which was going to be running at around 300, 320 kilometers per hour, into a real product. I mean, why, when you know the, when you have seen the Nozomi 500, you might wonder why it has such a long nose. It is really a train which has an extremely long front part. This has very much to do with a, an effect which is called the sonic boom effect. When a train at high speed goes into a small tunnel, and the Japanese tunnels at that time were very small, you would have air compressed and the, one, the air leaving then the tunnel would create a sound like a bullet going out of a barrel. And that was uh, something which the law only permitted a certain noise level because they were close by some villages. And so this was a, something which meant either you had to put mufflers in the beginning at the end of the tunnels or you had to change the design of the train. So what we did actually was, together with the engineers and the designers in Japan as well, we, we changed the train and the train moved from a shorter, getting always longer, the nose getting longer and longer, until we had the final product. And if you know a little bit about the history of Shinkansen trains, you will recognize that this train is totally different. It had a round cross section. Apart from this long nose, it was a totally next generation type of train. The train itself was a very big success. Uh, it was running from the center, Tokyo, down to the south, and uh, it was 
very highly esteemed by all the passengers and uh, from the design point of view it was a big success too because uh, it received a design prize which was very very important it was not a design prize actually it was a design a prize for innovation uh, which was given by the royal uh, house uh, in japan by the emperor of japan for innovation and uh, i as German designer was the first one to ever receive, as a non-Japanese, a prize like that.